Hey, what's up guys? MGH here. Welcome back to another Football Manager video, this time going through my current save with Dortmund that I've been streaming. Now, as you're watching this video, I'm about to go live on Twitch, so if you would like to see how I get on in my second season, then please do click that link in the description or just go to twitch.tv slash officialmgh and please follow me over there. I'd really appreciate it. Every single one of you just watching this video now, if you want more Football Manager, then Twitch right now is the place to be to watch me live. And if you feel like supporting me, you can subscribe to me on Twitch as well. It, co it costs £4.99, I believe. Um, you can donate, whatever you want to do. It's massively appreciated. But what I wanted to do in this video is walk through my team and walk through what I've learnt and how I'm getting on, really, because it's been a, a bit of an up and down save. I find it weird calling it a save, but it's not a career mode really, is it? So from now on, we'll call it a save. So let's walk you through what happened last year. Because if I go into my schedule here and go back to last season, you'll see we started off really well. The pre-season all the way until the middle of September, unbeaten. We did really, really well. And some of those games, okay, you could say not great opponents. And by the way, I've zoomed in on the interface. I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see what's going on. Um, I always zoom out again when I'm streaming, but just so you guys can see it in better quality. But you'll see we've done pretty well there. And then we go into this period where it was so up and down. I was really, really struggling to stay consistent. And there was this period here. I mean, I lost five games in a row. Hertz of Berlin, Heidenheim. I mean, who even are they <laughs> in the uh, German Cup third round? We then lost to Leipzig, Liverpool, Bayern. Yes, we had a really tough run of games there with three very tough teams, but there was no excuse for it. And it was at this point I thought, I need to change something. Now, this is the first thing I want to talk about. Football Manager is so, so detailed when it comes to tactics and training. At this point, I realised my tactics were just not working. And I know exactly why. I was changing tactics and formation way too often. If I lost a couple of games, it was like, right, that's it, changing tactics. And there's a thing in this game called familiarity. So if I go into my tactics here... And I'm sorry if you play Football Manager a lot and you already know all this stuff, but I'm talking to people that maybe don't play it um, and are interested in how I'm learning and how I'm getting on. But this thing here, familiarity, mine is completely maxed out in this 4-2-3-1 because I have stuck with it. Now, it's absolutely vital and it's the biggest thing I've learned that you keep your players playing in a very similar form formation, in, in similar positions so they gain familiarity. If you don't, they just don't play well. So when I was switching formations, switching tactics every few games, this familiarity was half. It was sometimes two thirds, then down again, and it was causing me so many issues when it came to play. When it came to playing in, in games. So again, if I oh, it saved it. Thank you very much, game. So around here, that's when I changed to a four-two-three-one wide with very basic custom instructions so I'm going to go through those in a moment but you can see straight away a huge improvement as we came to the end of the season now because of my errors and because of my lack of experience I actually only got Europa League football with Dortmund I failed to stay in the Champions League I got knocked out by Liverpool in the round of 16 it wasn't good it wasn't pretty and actually there was one game if I find it uh this one this game against Leverkusen, I got an email before this match and it said, if you lose this game, you're gone. You're fired. Somehow I won it 2-0. It was after this game against Werder Bremen, which I, I really shouldn't have lost that game. But then, look at this. I went on an absolute rampage with these new tactics and I climbed the table and eventually got Europa League football. So although it's not great, I kept my job. So now going into this season, and I've stuck with it, and look at the start here. We've drawn one game and won the rest. We've only conceded two goals. It's unbelievable. I mean, some of these games, 8-0 and 4-0 against the same team. Now, they're not the biggest and best team, but still, winning 12-0 in aggregate, it's, uh, it's pretty mental. So that's the first thing that I've really learnt, 100%. Tactics mean everything. So what I'm using at the moment, and of course, it's not going to work for everyone, 
it's a very attacking team. You'll see here I've got Rabio. I signed him on a free, and I'm playing him Advanced Playmaker Attack. Now, what that means is he's not really doing much defensive work. So I've got Witzel, who you could argue isn't the best defensive midfielder, but has been working really well for me. I've got him playing the box-to-box -box midfielder support. So he is going forward as well, and he's coming back. And it's a bit, it's a bit dodgy sometimes defensively, but the thing is... I don't seem to be conceding too many goals, so I just, I'm scared to change it. But my tactics are, I'm on positive, that seems to work well for me. In possession, I'm doing short passing. I thought if I want to keep possession, make it difficult for the team to break me down, and I just want to keep the ball as long as possible and keep it simple, short passing is the key, really. I want to play out of the defence, I don't want to be knocking the ball forward from a goal kick. I want to work the ball into the box. Now, a lot of you that have been watching my streams will see that my highlights are often passes around the edge of the box, very similar to Arsenal, actually. And then we find a little gap, we go through and we score. That seems to be how we do it. Also, a much lower tempo. I found that that really helped with the intensity. So if I... Uh, oh, yeah, I get click done. Intensity up here, that's almost giving you a, a heads up on... How many injuries you're going to get? How, how tired your players are going to get? My intensity was sometimes almost all the way at the top because I had just too many instructions. My players were getting exhausted and most importantly, they were getting injured. It really wasn't good. It really wasn't. So I've managed to cut that in half with these tactics and it seems to work really well. In transition, I'm taking short kicks. We are distributing to the centre backs, which ma matches the play out of the defence. That's another thing I've learned. You need to tie in your, your tactics to make them work together. And then also counter-pressing, which means we get the ball back really quickly. Out of possession, I've got a high defensive line. Higher, I should say. Higher line of engagement as well to match it. More urgency, so my players are frantically running around trying to get the ball back. And I'm preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. That is absolutely key. Royce, who's playing as my striker at the moment, as well as Sancho, Brandt, Havertz, they're all getting forward and they're always picking up loose balls from the goalkeeper and the defenders when they make a mistake. And I've scored quite a few goals that way. So you're already seeing quite a few new signings in this team. Havertz, of course, my most recent one on stream. Brandt, we managed to sign last season as well. Of course, he's joined in real life. When I started this save, I did not have Schultz, Brandt or Hazard. I decided to start from scratch. Um, and Brandt is the only player I've brought in so far from those three. Uh, in defence, it's as you'd expect, but we do have a new goalkeeper that's come in because Hits and Berkey, it wasn't great. Berkey's my new backup and Rajkovic is my main goalkeeper. I'm, I'm really impressed with him so far. And this is the beauty of streaming. I was asking everyone in the stream, who should I sign? And some of the suggestions are absolutely fantastic. So thank you guys so much for all of that. So on the bench, we've got... Berkey, Zagadou, who I think I need to play a little bit more, maybe in, in front of Diallo this season. Wagnerman, who can play right back and left back. What a player that is. It's so, so important having versatility. We then got Delaney, Larson, Pavon, who I signed for 4 million. He's worth well over 30 now. Look at that, 36 million. Unbelievable. And then we've got Paco Alcacer, who can't get in the team right now because Royce is playing at striker. That reminds me, actually, another thing I've learned. These circles next to their positions, I was obsessed with making them look like this, getting them fully green. What I've learned is that literally means nothing. It gives you a heads up on what they're best at, their strengths are at, but if they've got good enough stats to play in the position, you know, Royce, it's half full, but if we go into his stats, I mean, you can see he's having a little bit of a, a down at the moment, and it, it is pretty clear to me he's, he's going downhill because of his age, but he's still absolutely killing it for me, but... Just look at their stats. It highlights the stats that are important for the position you're, you're picking up here. So let's go for striker. You want to make sure all of these highlighted stats, you'll see if I switch between positions, it changes them. You just want to make sure that those stats are good. And of course they're going to be. Royce is one of the best attacking players in the world. So that's another thing that I've learnt. We've also got Piszczek, Balerdi, Goetze, who I'm actually trying to sell at this point. Marilla, unbelievable young player. Weigel, Wolf, Toyan, Dahoud, Pashlak, and Isaac. Isaac's actually been sold in real life, but uh, I'm keeping him, that is for sure. So it's a very strong squad. It really is. We're losing Piszczek at the end of the season. He is retiring, as you can see there, next June 2020. But we are going into season two. 
And this is where you guys come in because I have, uh, where do I go? Finances. I have 58 million left to spend. That's after bringing in Havertz. I've obviously sold quite a few players. You'll probably notice there's quite a few missing. I need to spend this money on a defender, maybe another position. And so far, I'm, I'm struggling. I really am. If I show you my shortlist here. So we've got uh, a couple of players that I was looking at. Militao being one. He's unhappy at uh, Porto because he wants a new contract. You're looking at at least 80 million there, which is unbelievable. But the one player that I'm really trying to get is Jonathan Tarr. Now, I have added him as my top target. I've tried to unsettle him by getting Royce to talk about him in the media, saying how good it would be if we could sign him up. I've tried everything there is, offering installments, money up front, clauses, whatever it may be, and I just haven't been able to unsettle him. So I need your guys' help. Please come and watch the stream right now and help me sign Jonathan Tarr because I think he is going to help us just go to that next level when it comes to playing in the Europa League this year to try and win that or at least get top four in the league, which I think we will get to then go into the Champions League, because that is where Dortmund deserve to be, and I absolutely failed my team last season. So, yeah, I definitely need some help bringing in Jonathan Tarr. Now, what else have I learned? Or should I explain just what I like? Because I'm getting a lot of questions, you know, what do I enjoy about Football Manager? One of the best things for me is down here, you've got your second team in, in Dortmund's case. We've got Dortmund Team 2. We've also got the under-19s. And this is why I spoke about this in my FIFA video yesterday. This needs to be in career mode because having a place for your young players that aren't quite ready for first team football to go, this is it. This is where they need to be going. You can see we've got a bunch of youth players. You can see their potentials and things like that. If you if you look into them and develop them, develop them you can then move them into the first team. So that reminds me actually one player that we've just moved in. So I signed Marilla at the beginning of last season and I quickly put him into the under 19s got an email saying he's outperforming he needs to go up put him in the Dortmund team too and he scored well over 30 goals last season and now uh, no sorry he got over 30 appearances and 16 goals that's what I meant to say and now he's going into the first team he's going to get some some football and that's exactly what my philosophies are at this club I've been asked to bring in young players and develop them you know and that's what Dortmund do another thing I've really enjoyed is using the board so I already mentioned how I signed Brandt and Havertz. So last season, when we were really struggling, I thought I, I just need that that special player. And I thought Brandt, there's no one really better to sign than Brandt as Dortmund, right? It's happened in real life. He's a great young German player. I need him. But I only had 10 million pounds or 10 million euros. So what I did is I said to the board, Brandt will give us better results please can we go ahead and buy him and they just gave me the money they just went ahead and signed him how amazing is that so it really did change the season because Brandt came in and won our player of the year I believe or maybe he was just behind Royce I can't quite remember now and the same thing with Havertz luckily I had the money to do it but I accidentally added him as a player that I wanted and the board just started making offers for him and I actually I actually I actually withdrew the contract offer because they were offering him a lot of money that I thought I could do a better job but it just blew my mind that you can just ask your board to do stuff like that and it, it's so realistic you know and I really love that I really do there's so many things I love but anyway that's going to bring this video to an end just a, an update really on how I'm getting on I do plan on doing a series soon so watch out for that it's going to be in July I'm going to look at doing a full save on YouTube. I'm still trying to learn bits of the game. Um, but yeah, just, just watch out for that. But as I mentioned, I'm live streaming right now. Like literally, you click that link and I'm playing this save right now. Obviously, if you're watching this video a couple of weeks later, it might not be the case. But right now, as this video has gone live, if you're one of the first few thousand to watch it, please just come over to my Twitch channel. Even if you're unsure, I'm streaming a lot at the moment and I'd really appreciate your support. Just follow me over there. And, you know, subscribe if you really want to. I'm trying to get more emotes. I've got some really funny emotes, some Mustafi ones, let's just say that. I mean, if you join, you, you're kind of joining the Mustafi fan club at this point. That's kind of what we're naming it. So uh, I've got a little bit of a community growing over there. And I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you could come out and follow me. Twitch.tv slash OfficialMGH. You can follow me on Twitter as well for future streams. That's just at MGH, which is awesome. I managed to get MGH on Twitter and it's still verified. But anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. 
Check me out on Twitch and I will see you next time.